championship week continues with the most storied rivalry in all of college basketball. Last year, nearly 1.6 million cars were stolen in the United States. That's one car every 20 seconds every day of the year. It's time to get serious about crime prevention. Time for the club. The club is a tempered steel lock that's tough to defeat. It remains the only vehicle locking device that's police recommended. I believe the club to be the best vehicle theft deterrent you can buy. That's why I use it on my personal vehicle. Plus, the club can protect your vehicle's airbag from being stolen. It's a growing problem that the club is helping to control. But be aware of the lookalikes and the copycats out there. Be sure your anti-theft device says the club on the handle. Accept no cheap imitations. Get the one vehicle anti-theft device that police officers like myself recommend. Get the club. It's time to get serious about crime prevention. It's time for the club. Now over 10 million sold worldwide. Leave it to Delta to design a stylish and practical faucet that works with you in perfect harmony. No matter what the situation. Oh, oh, honey, honey, honey. Party. Honey, though, I, I think I got this. Listen. Delta, the way water is brought to life. <laughs> Went out to buy a car. Dad said good luck. Saw my new Ford Ranger and said, Son, that's a truck. My girlfriend loves the new and style. Now all she wants to do is ride. Mom sees the airbag and takes heart. Finally, her boy's getting smart. My best friend pops the hood. Look for horsepower. That's good. Well, my boss says it takes the case. A truck with any lock brakes. So oh, yeah, my Ford Ranger's really hot stuff. Now Dad asks, Can I borrow the truck? ESPN's NCAA Basketball, brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And welcome to our ESPN studios as we continue with Championship Week. We call it that because it's as exciting as it gets. Case in point, we had a couple of teams get in there who actually had losing records during the regular season. Let's take a look at the tournament ticket holders and let you know who got there today. UCLA, you know they're in as the Pac-10 champion, 10 out of the Ivy League. Florida International, their record 11 and 18 as they head into the tournament and a likely date possibly with UCLA if they are the top seed overall. North Carolina AMT, they had a losing record during the regular season. Another team will get in tonight at 9.30 Eastern time out of the Ohio Valley Conference. Austin P or Murray State, that one's at 9.30 Eastern time. Then following Sports Center, we come back with the WAC. BYU and Utah, top two teams in the conference. Utah at 14 and three. BYU at 13 and four. So we'll see you at halftime with scores and highlights and more of Championship Week. But right now, one of the more exciting games of the season. Let's take you out to Tobacco Road. All right, John, thanks very much. Welcome back to the Dean Dome for Duke and North Carolina. Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale, great to have you with us, everybody. The last time we saw these teams, 102-100 in double overtime. North Carolina wins. It typified Duke's season. They've lost so many close games. Tonight can make up for a lot of it. Expectations galore. Everybody expected another unbelievable dramatic performance. And you're right, Mike. It's been Heartbreak Hotel all year long for the Dukies. They need that one special moment. Will it happen tonight? Remember this. 3.9. That's the differential in the ACC with Duke right now in losing. Only three points per nine, point nine rather, all year long. That's amazing, that number. It's been Heartbreak Hotel. Double overtime to North Carolina. Double overtime to Virginia. Two to Maryland twice. They can play. Do they have enough tonight? We'll find out. We sure will. And now let's take a look at the McDonald's starting lineups for Duke and interim head coach Pete Goddard. Cherokee Parks is the star. In the first game against the Heels, 25 points, 13 rebounds. For North Carolina under Dean Smith, Donald Williams will be playing his final home game on senior night. That's why you see Sullivan and Landry in the lineup. His shooting touch is back better than 40% on three-point field goals. Starting five, that's been the story for North Carolina. Outstanding starting five. The bench has been a dilemma. They lost a heartbreaker to Virginia. They didn't get one point from the bench. 
Rashid Wallace coming off uh, probably the worst game of his career against Wake Forest, where they just collapsed the defense in on him and totally shut him down. Well, they collapsed. Also, they had the presence of Tim Duncan, who is a, certainly a superstar now for Wake Forest. Had another great performance today. I'll tell you one thing. You look at uh, Virginia. I mean, you look at right now North Carolina. They've changed their starting lineup for senior night. For senior night. Going back to that double overtime game, Dean Smith said, I've never seen anything like it. Jerry Stackhouse said it was the greatest game I ever played in. And I know one thing, it was one of the best five games I ever saw. Well, one of the best five I've ever been involved in. Dean said it was the best regular season game that he's ever been part of in terms of drama, intensity, and emotion. Landry starting the game on senior night, along with Sullivan, who is back after back surgery, but certainly not the Pat Sullivan you remember of two years ago. I think you got to get Wallace involved early in this game, get him some confidence out of the game after not scoring from the field against Wake Forest. Donald Williams misses the runner. This is Capel, good outside shooter for three. He's a good starter. He usually starts early, scores a lot of points, but has spurts where he really disappears. He must be active all night long. Just not a true point guard, which has been one of Duke's major problems this year. They haven't had a penetrator. A guy to break the defense down with triple penetration. Calabria, tough shot inside, and the rebound goes to Price. Maybe Duke's most athletic player. If I were Duke, I'd go right at Wallace and try to get a foul on him early. Cable passed on the three and then forced the two. I think their game plan out of the game, Mike, should be to take the ball inside right at Wallace and make the play on a defensive end. Wallace got away from Meek, and Meek will be called for the hole. On the other side, that seems to be the game plan of Dean Smith, Michelangelo, bring the ball to the inside. Rasheed trying to post up early. Here he is, drop step, getting the post position. There's Meek trying to get over the top. The spin to the inside, and the foul. One thing to be cognizant of tonight, Greg Newton, who was the backup big man for Duke all year, is out for the next two semesters. He was suspended after an appeal for academic dishonesty did not go his way. Williams with a run on the lane. Newton had the rebound knocked away, but it departs. Turkey Parks has had a solid year all year long. He's been able to make the three-point shot. See, right now, I go inside the beat. I get the ball down inside. Get the good angle and drop it inside. Trajan Langdon wide open for three. It's 6-0 Duke. That's been the big play for Duke all year long, shooting the three. They're making 7.1 threes per game, the most in the history of Duke. And Langdon and Capel are now both in the top seven in the ACC in field goal percentage. Loose ball knocked out of bounds, out to North Carolina. That can be a negative in a way, the fact that they broke the school record shooting threes and making threes, because that can mean that you're always coming from behind trying to play catch-up basketball. Sure. This crowd certainly isn't alive like it was when we were at Cameron. Nothing like that place that night. The electricity was unbelievable. Well, that place has never been like it was that night either. That was un unreal. Calabria, baseline, wheels into the lane, left uh, hand, won't go. Wallace with a rebound, he's fouled by Langdon. Rasheed really very active on the inside. Here comes Jerry Stackhouse into the ball game, and he was named Sports Illustrated's National Player of the Year. What's ironic about this, He's probably not going to be the conference player of the year. I tell you, he may not even make in terms of when you look here, first team All-American on many teams, but he's been outstanding. He's had himself a super south for a year. Donald Williams with a miss. Wake Forest in the win on Tuesday night. Started with a 7-0 run. Duke trying to better that. Langdon just tossed it up, and it went in 8-0. Agent Langdon averaging double figures, 10 points a game, just right in the gap. This is the start that they needed at Duke. Quiet the crowd. Well, the crowd's starting to get in a little bit now. They don't like this. Sometimes you lose your rhythm when you try to be a nice guy, play the seniors out of the game. Calabria goes baseline. Good help by Meek. Williams alone for the three, takes the two instead. He's gotten so good at that runner and draws the foul. He made that runner against Wake Forest when they came from behind and beat Wake Forest 62 to 61. What a great year for Wake Forest. If you were talking national coach of the year, you'd have to consider David Odom. What a job he has done with Absolutely. that Absolutely. He has done a brilliant job and has ever since he went to Wake Forest and seems to be constantly overlooked. He has a terrific ball club. My top four guys, if I were going coach of the year, would certainly be right now Roy Williams, David Odom, Gene Caney, and Kelvin Sampson in Oklahoma doing a great job. I'd probably vote for Williams. I think he's done a great job. 
Loose ball, beat, got a hand on it, dive, can't get it. I'd have to throw Gary Williams in there, too, Dick. Well, you know, we could throw a lot of guys with so many great jobs being done. By the way, let's wish a speedy recovery to Gary, who's sitting in a hospital and battling pneumonia. Gary, we need you back in that sideline. Washington Adventist Hospital, it's 8-3. North Carolina trailing by five, but they have the ball. Wallace in low against me. Oh! He's hesitating inside. Wallace is saying, count it. He's trying to say count it, but that was a legitimate block. We're going to watch from the help side. Now watch Parks come over from the help side and give Meek some help here. There's the great angle for the shot block. He had the perfect angle, Cherokee Parks. North Carolina starting one out of eight from the floor. Parks guarding Stackhouse. Stackhouse for three, in and out. Meek with a rebound. That matchup will be interesting. I think Stackhouse could beat Parks off dribble penetration in a one-on-one. Parks gets it low, got by Stackhouse, banked it too hard. Very mobile, Rasheed Wallace. Great mobility. Williams, his favorite spot. Good ball for him. Meek tips it out. Chris Collins in the game gets it. Hardest one of the lob. A oh, nice sense. pass by Cable back to Collins for three. That's the shot they've been missing from Chris. Chris made 76 threes last year, but he had the penetration of Grant Hill kicking him the basketball. I remember this, in fairness to Collins. He came off that injury, broke his foot the very first day of practice. The big difference this year, he is shooting 20% from long range. Here's a three out of the corner from McGinnis. Wallace, offensive follow. Tipped in, stack out. It's 11-5. Jerry Stackhouse ranks in the top 10 in the ACC in five categories. We're talking scoring, field goal percentage, steals, block shots. 15-55 to go. First half, Duke with a six-point lead and a real hot start. There's the unsung hero for North Carolina. Number five, Jeff McGinnis, solid point guard. Plays the ball exceptionally well. Has a little problem when the ball is not in the hands of the guy who's guarding. Jumper at the baseline by Price. I tell you what, I think McGinnis is the next superstar in this league. Well, I'll tell you one thing, he's a tremendous point guard. In fact, in that Duke game, 102 to 100, had 10 assists with one turnover. He has the number one assist to turnover ratio in the ACC. Wow! A new one for Wallace. I couldn't believe it, he shot a hook shot. After it planked off the rim, you may not see it again. McGinnis keeps other guards from penetrating. Parks baseline jump shot. Partially tipped by Stackhouse. He's going to Stackhouse. He's going to Stackhouse. Stackhouse gets it, wheels into the lane, got his own rebound. <laughs> Meek. And North Carolina missing a couple of point blank opportunities. Eric Meek really gives you everything he has. He's such a tenacious battler. He really battles on the inside, gets maximum out of his talent. See, I go inside to Meek. He's being checked. Look at this now. You got Parks playing Stackhouse. Parks has got to slide down to the inside. Don't play on a perimeter. Parks has got to go inside against. But oh, they're going to double up. He's wide open for three. The Chief can't hit this with a long rebound to McGinnis. He's made 33 threes this year. He had three total in his first three years. Williams misses the three. North Carolina firing the ball up there pretty rapidly. I think North Carolina's going to show a little bit more patience on offense. Also, Duke's one. If I was Duke, I wanted to use the clock a little bit. Capel, double clutch, fights for his own rebound. It's tipped out of bounds to Duke. We've got a timeout, 14.04 to go first half. Duke with an eight-point spread. Burger! Is that bacon I smell? Got a taste for a burger with bacon. Oh, I love bacon! Crisp pot bacon sounds good to me. Go! <laughs> they do a lock a lock it up with KD. Better have one for me. McDonald's Bacon Double Cheeseburger, a bacon lover's dream with savory smoky bacon is just 99 cents. Or get a morning fresh bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. Only 99 cents for a limited time. Get back here right now. Have have your fun. The break today. Did you ever wonder what life is like on other planets? Like maybe there's this world where everybody can slam dunk. And everyone gets a Ford Ranger just for being born. Or there's a planet where nothing costs more than a buck and your biggest decision is what color probe to drive. Maybe there's a world where everybody's job is just to go to the beach and you get a Mustang convertible as a company car. 
Ford. Cool cars for a cool planet. And if uh, he buys a lottery ticket, I wouldn't want a share of it because he hasn't had any luck all year long. Virginia loses in double overtime. They lost at Florida State by three, at Maryland by two, then the double overtime thriller to North Carolina, one to Wake Forest, two again to Maryland. I'll tell you this, nobody wants to play him in the ACC tournament. Exactly, I'll tell you, it's been a heartbreak hotel for Peter Gadet, but I know this, the K factor, think about it. I think Mike Krzyzewski is one of about a dozen coaches who because of success that they've had, bring certain credibility to the sideline and intangibles that I think he's worth six points a game. And many of those games would have been in a win column with Michael K on the side. Meek, offensive rebound, he's fouled by Zwicker. But I'll tell you this, and you know I have as much respect for Mike Krzyzewski as anybody I've ever met in this business. Duke lacks personnel. This is not the same kind of club that dominated the whole decade. Well, anytime you lose some guys like Hurley and Late, they're in Grant Hill. You've seen where they've been drafted. And the bottom line for the future, they lose Meek and they lose Marks. You're losing some great size up front. They get a tremendous recruit by the name of Payman Domzowski, who'll be a great asset. But they got to step up recruiting to be able to get to the upper echelon again in the ACC. Unless there's another factor that can happen to get them back quickly. If Joe Smith, Rasheed Wallace, Tim Duncan, and Jerry Stackhouse say bye-bye and go early, they get back to hunt quickly. They collected $200 million, if they all do. Meek wow. makes one out of two. It's only the third point from Duke's front court so far, but they lead by nine. You realize that North Carolina was two for 17 out of the gate here, Mike? It hasn't been pretty. Landry to Zwicker. Right now, I'd reverse the basketball and get it in Stackhouse's hands and let him try to beat Parks off the dribble. Set a screen and enroll. Jerry's got to step out and take him one-on-one. McGinnis to the baseline, a little floater, he hits it. You know, Calabria hasn't had a shot yet. He's the best long-range shooter in the country. Yeah, 54% from three-point range. 14-7, 13 minutes, 12 seconds to go, first half. What a great baseline drive by McGinnis. Duke playing with a lot of confidence tonight. Collins, an acrobatic shot. Chris Collins, very emotional player. Gets right into gaps, puts the defense. He has five, and the lead is back to nine. The only time I've seen them blown out all year, last week, Brent Musburger and I did the game with UCLA, and that didn't happen until the last five minutes when they put the real fast break on him, and UCLA is probably the best transition team in America. I really thought with eight minutes to go in the game, they had a real shot to win. Here's the field goal story. Six out of 12 for Duke and North Carolina just struggling mightily at the beginning. In that first matchup, they have a nine-point lead late in that game, Duke. And Donald Williams brought him back for the flurry. It was a great play. Landry, the 5 8 captain, the former walk-on, said he had achieved a dream, worked his way up for J.B. Ball. Has two great moments, made a big three to beat Georgia Tech, made a great steal against Wake Forest. Shot clock is down to four. Williams has to put up a three. Parks with a rebound. Swicker with a foul. But I don't understand right now in the composition, when you look at their team, North Carolina, that they're not bringing the ball over to Mr. Stackhouse and allow him to drive and go to the goal. He's a tremendous one-on-one -on -one player. And Parks, I don't believe, can play him. Doesn't have the quickness to play him out on the wing. 16-7, Duke on top of North Carolina. And on the other side, I don't think Stackhouse could play Parks if he would post inside. Collins, who already has five points. See, I'd go inside if I were Cherokee. Get down deep, Chief. Get the ball inside. Collins for three. Parks, offensive rebound over Stackhouse. Goes out to take a jumper. His shot's been off tonight. Collins got a hand on it, then kicked it out of bounds. What he is doing right now, at 6'11", he's making himself play like 6'3 and 4, and he's coming down to the size of the guys on the perimeter. He's got to take advantage. He's a senior. He's got to recognize his strength and go inside and force Stackhouse to play him on the box. 
Coming in for Duke, Kenny Blakeney and Wallace checks back in for North Carolina. Zwicker will sit down and Capel gets a breather for the Blue Devils. That was a great article by Alexander Wolf in Wasn't Sports it? Illustrated. Tremendous about this rivalry. Nothing rivals it. Alexander, a great writer, really showed the emotion and the drama of what this is all about. This is well, the best rivalry in basketball, it, eight miles apart. It's that and more. Best it's amazing. Best conference in the land. Wallace, nice touch. He had to tickle the twine in the last game, plus right here, it's his first deuce. He averages 18-7, that's two points tonight. He's a tremendous talent. He's so skilled. Lang, the nice cut to the bucket, the tip won't go by Parks. Meek, oh, what a worker. What a great effort right there. That's nothing but effort, enthusiasm, and energy. Mr. Meek on the inside. Nobody plays harder than Eric Meek. McGinnis with a pull-up jumper, sweet stroke, smooth. Mr. Musburger says that's my favorite point guard in America. He is going to be an all-star, no doubt. Here comes the trap, nearly got the steal. Duke with the numbers, Parks, way short on the jumper again. He's playing exclusively on a perimeter. He's playing the two guard right now. Somebody better tell me, 6'11". Sullivan, wise, lob the wall. from the field against the Wake Forest, Stephen Beacons. The trap against Blakeney does a nice job of keeping his dribble. Collins kicks it back to Langdon. Three! Great play by Collins to get into the seam of the defense and then dish it back out to the perimeter for the open three. Trajan Langdon has eight. He had a career-high 20 in the first game at Duke. 21-13 Blue Devils. Oh, look at Wallace posted in deep. He's really active inside. He wants the ball. Great story seeing Pat Sullivan on the floor after battling that back surgery. Hold on, Collins. Number one on the junior from Northbrook, Illinois. When Wallace goes to the hole, you better clear out. It's no man's land. It's an eight-point Duke lead. There are a lot of reasons we created Ford Windstar with more passenger and cargo room than any leading minivan. A lot of reasons we gave Windstar the widest stance for secure handling. And reasons we gave it over 40 standard safety features. And even went so far as to include 24-hour roadside assistance. We'd be glad to name all the reasons. But you've already named them. Ford Windstar. Created for the most important people in the world. Today, a woman needs a life insurance plan of her own. State Farm sells life insurance from an agent who's there for you today and there tomorrow, too. You see, we start you outright with a plan specifically designed for a woman's needs. One that protects the people who count on you for so very much. And a State Farm agent will be there tomorrow, too as your life changes, to keep that plan working for the people you love. State Farm sells life insurance. Time to wash up. Isn't it just like Delta to design a stylish faucet that's practical too? Give me that. So it's long enough to reach today's devil. <laughs> and even triple sinks. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Need a towel? No, Mama. Duke leading with by eight points with 10.07 to go first half. We're going to take a look right now. Mr. Cherokee Park's down in here. We're going to watch how he comes out this area and plays small. We're going to see them reverse the basketball. Right here, now there's the jumper. Freeze it. Right here. Now, instead of taking the ball up, he's got a smaller guy. He comes out here to shoot a jump shot. He wants to shoot jump shots. Look at him bring it out. And then he turns and shoots the jumper on Stackhouse rather than going right up to the basket. And he is 0 for 7 from the floor. He's a good shooter, though, Mike. He really is. His excellent touch. He's made 30 threes this year. Landry with a runner. Pierce Landry has really helped him, certainly at times, off the bench. Well, when Calabria got hurt against Georgia Tech, he steps in the game and he throws up at the end of the game a baseline wide open three. 
Blakeney dribbled the ball off of his foot. Capel is waiting to come back in the ballgame for Blakeney, but he can't get in before the turnover. Who would have ever thought it? Thinking about Duke right now, when you look at their record on the basement of the ACC, I mean, you talk about major disappointments. They would agree they've been one this year, as well as Florida and certainly Wisconsin. There's the shooting story so far. Carolina had hit only two of its first 17, but they have hit six of their last seven. Nice baseline jump shot. The lead cut to three. Mr. Williams gives him a lift. Little point guard hits the open jumper. Nearly another steal. Langdon for three. Got it. Trajan Langdon on fire in the first half. He has 11. He's in that zone, Mike. ITZ. As you said earlier, ITY in the zone. <laughs> I'll never let you live that one down. Oh. Nice head fake by Stackhouse. He's dynamite. Inside, if he catches the ball down in deep, he's got that explosive first step in the lane. Basket counts. Stackhouse gets the ball in deep. Once he catches the ball down inside, there's the head fake, and now he's going to spin across the lane, and then he squares his body. Notice how he squares his body. Look at the rotation. The good back spin. Now we're going to watch him in a one-on-one. -on -one. Triple threat position. He could drive. He can shoot, or he can pass. Great offensive player. Went head-to-head -head with Michael Jordan, a little one-on-one. -on -one. Jordan beat him 20-5. to five. He said, that's okay. He said, I was shocked. I scored on him. He said, I scored on Michael Jordan. How many guys would they have beat 20-5? to Three-point play the old-fashioned way for Stackhouse. The lead again down to three. Here comes the trap. Bad pass by Capel. That's the problem with not having a true point guard. You take Capel, a shooting guard, put him in that spot. He's had a lot of criticism because he's had a lot of turnovers, but he's not a point guard. Well, see, last year, Grant Hill gave him such versatility. He's sure. a reposition player. He gave him an extra passer. Williams low to Stackhouse and Stack, or Wallace, rather, and Wallace got away with a push inside, picks up the foul. Coming up right after our ball game from the Dean Dome, the Ohio Valley Conference Championship. Austin P, the surprise fifth seed, knocked off two-time defending champion Tennessee State. They'll go against Murray State, a team that's made it to the final six straight years. I'll tell you another coach. I just saw a score flash. You better consider for coach of the year. Leonard Hamilton and John. He has done it by Miami. What a resurgence down there. Here's the double team on Capel. Does a nice job to get rid of it. Trajan Langdon has the field. Missed that shot. Wallace, the outlet, the stack house. Look out. Nice job by Capel to get back. Yeah, Capel did a great job stopping the basketball. Jeff McGinnis ties it at 24. They have so many weapons. They can hurt you with so many options. Jeff McGinnis, a rising star at the point guard slot. He can play D. Look at him play the basketball. He plays it very tough. It's when the ball is not in the hands. Nice feed to Meek, and Eric Meek scores down low. That's the one thing they haven't been able to do with Park so far. That's great entry. 45-degree angle, two-man play. He, he gave a great pass to the lead hand for me. Calabria against Price. Nice spin move. Wallace didn't look like he was ready for the pass. Now McGinnis will try another three. Stackhouse. He'll try a three. He's improved his range as a shooter. My friends, you're looking at a future star at the next level. He'd be a great open court player. Personally, I hope he stays and wears the Carolina blue for another year. North Carolina with its first lead. Price nearly lost. Capel for three. In and out. Look at Cherokee Parks playing out on the perimeter. He's just hanging around the perimeter. Nearly got the steal there, knocked it out of bounds. We have a timeout, 7.02 to go in the half. Carolina, after the slow start, has taken the lead. What makes Cinemax the best movie network on TV? Here's a reason you might not know. We've got a different kind of movie every weeknight at 8. Everything from comedy to drama to suspense. The movies change every Monday through Friday, but the time to tune in is always the same. So if you like movies, you've got the picture. A different kind of movie every weeknight at 8. That's a week's worth of reasons why Cinemax is the best movie network on TV. Computer service can make your computer problems a thing of the past. Our sales representatives are here to help you create the custom system 
or local area network you need for your business or home. Our service technicians not only build portables, notebooks, and desktop units, they service them. Remember that Rome Computer Service is also the home of Celtac, your authorized agent for AirTouch Cellular. For all your computer and cell phone needs, give Rome Computer Service a call or stop by our office on Dean Avenue today. The number for you to get involved on the program is 1-800-98-TALK-2. Yeah! Johnny, you're on Talk 2. Romy, you're a wanted man here in Nebraska. Johnny, let me tell you something. It's good to have your smack right here on Talk 2. Enough is enough. <laughs> Even that can't help you this time, Scrubby. The horror. Oh my God. What a tank. Talk 2. If you're a scrub, don't bother. <laughs> Jim Rome on Talk 2. Live weeknights on ESPN 2. <laughs> UConn, regular season champions in the Big East, number one seed in the tournament, but Jim Calhoun is not happy. His second technical early in the game, about seven minutes in, and he's tossed out. Miami trying to make a run for the tourney, up nine. Mike and Dick. Well, that's a shock. I mean, Miami was picked, I think, by just about everybody to be awful this year, and they have really had quite a season. Yeah, he's done a great job down here, getting a little bit more interest in basketball. North Carolina with its first lead and the basketball. 6.56 to go in the first half. And Duke has gone zone. Yet it went to a 2-3 zone right now. Actually looks like Cherokee's playing out on the wing. They're going to try to get in the gap. There's the gap on the wing. Outstanding ball movement. The three-point shot. Ball goes. Stackhouse with the save. Off of Stackhouse out of bounds. Cherokee's got to be more involved on the inside. Six and a half minutes to go in the half. Capel running the club. He had a short breather a while ago. Meek against oh, Wallace and fouled by Wallace. That's two on Rashid. See, I think that's smart. Bringing the ball inside, taking the ball at Rashid, trying to get him into foul trouble. Excellent play. Now look at Cherokee right here. Cherokee Parks, the last possession they had. He stays on his perimeter. Now watch this right here. Number 44, six foot 11. Look at him, Cherokee, go inside. Freeze it. Look at him right here. He's got to get in his gap. He's got to get on the glass. He's got to go to the board. John Saunders, I can't believe it. Look at him. He's playing like 5'11". He's playing. He wants to guard Saunders. He had 13 rebounds in the first game, and he certainly didn't get him from out past the free throw line. There's Meek, 56% shooter, one out of three tonight. Cherokee Parks has not scored as yet, and he is a ice cold 0 for 7. And really, that's a plus in the way for Duke, that they could be hanging down only one with him struggling like that. Because he's too good a player, you know he's going to start shooting a little better than that. Meek hits the second one. We're tied at 27. Let's see if they stay in that zone or they rotate. Oh, they're staying 2-3. A lot of gap at that foul line area. And three really good three-point shooters on the floor for Dean Smith. Right now, you're susceptible to the wing jump shot. And also, the foul line area is open. If you slide someone to the high post area, right in that foul line. Williams goes baseline. Stackhouse, good head fake, wide open. McGinnis. Collins. Capel, nice save. Somehow he got the ball through. Langdon picks it up. Collins open for three. Wide drive, swish. Chris Collins has eight. He's got his rhythm tonight, and he struggled, as you said, all year long. Baseline drive by Stackhouse. Good job to cut him off. Wallace was going to slam, lost it on the way up. That would have been a monster. See, I'd back it out right now. I'd bring the ball back outside. Langdon for three. Hey. Trajan's on fire, baby. Holy cow, Trajan Langdon with 14 first-half points. He just loves to see Carolina. Meek working really hard on Wallace down low. They're going to stay in that 2-3 zone until they hit this open shot. Calabria, the best long-range shooter in the country with a miss. Meek with a rebound. Wallace goes down, nearly a steal. Duke all of a sudden back up by six after they were challenged. Parks fakes to go baseline. Meek, nice move with a left hand. I think that's a great move, bringing the ball inside. Getting it right down low, taking it at Rasheed Wallace, making him play on a defensive end. If you've got a post player who can attack him, go right out of early. Duke has an answer for North Carolina's challenge. It's 35-27. Oh, 
been effective so far, hasn't it? really has. They haven't made the open shot from the perimeter until right there. Williams with a tough spin move. That's a two, and Donald has five. I think you can only buy so much time with that 2-3 zone against the shooting ability of North Carolina. Remember, Mike, they lead the ACC in three-point shooting, 43% a game. Collins tried to get the touch pass to Langdon. Hey, you think there are a few people right now cheering for Duke? Like maybe Gary Williams in Maryland? Like Mr. Jones in Virginia? Like Dave Odom in Wake Forest? For the first time in the history of the ACC, there is a chance that there will be a four-way tie for first place. And, of course, all Maryland has to do to ensure being number one is win at Virginia tomorrow. I say all facetiously, of course. Well, you know, Dan Bonner said that today, and he said it so really brilliantly, I felt. In fact, it's in Maryland's hands. Just go out and win it. You quiet all the clock. Dante Calabria hits his first three. Time has run out on that 2-3 zone. Williams and Calabria have just sent a message to Peter Gaudet. Get out of the 2-3. Capel Knight. Yes, yes, hello. About time. The Chief is inside. Wow, finally. Cherokee parts with his first bucket. The lead goes back to five. Sullivan, the trailer, didn't want the shot. Williams will take it for three. Parks knocked away. Price and Collins. It's a two on three. Parks, nice lean in. Can't get the shot though. McGinnis, two on two. All right. Nice oh. And he's fouled by Capel. Little shake and bake by Jeff McGinnis. He was part of an Oak Hill connection along with Jerry Stackhouse. Right now, North Carolina in a real recruiting war with Virginia for Melvin Whitaker. Six foot ten from out of Oak Hill. Now watch the spin. He goes, Capel, try to play this, baby. I'm going to spin. That's how you do it on a Charlotte playground. Spins, protects the ball, lays it on the glass. Really a good job by Capel to stay with it. McGinnis will go to the line where he's a 64% shooter. One of the interesting stats about these teams, as storied as their programs are and as great as their players have been over the years, they are eighth and ninth, respectively, in free throw shooting in the ACC, which I find to be incredible. I know, it really is when you look at the free throw shooting in North Carolina with the great shooters they have. As a team, they're only shooting 66.7 from free throw land, 51.2 from field goal land, and 43.2 from three point land. McGinnis, one out of two. Swicker kept it alive. McGinnis down the lane. Langley got a hand on it. Calabria with a loose ball. Dante Calabria. He's more than just a three-point shooter, Mike. He's done a great job rebounding at 6'4", forced to play that wing. Yeah, because they're a small basketball team. When they play Wallace in the middle, Stackhouse and Calabria on the wings, they're not a big team. Meek tries the tough pass to Parks. The fifth turnover against Duke. 2.45 to go in the half. Blue Devils by two. Even at 101 years of age, we here at Kelly Springfield like to keep active. Although occasionally, we have to stop and catch a breath. Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company. When does a car feel good? When things are easy to reach. So we built a cabin simulator that varies the location of almost everything the driver uses to drive the car. We moved the parts in and out and up and down. It wasn't until everyone was comfortable that we could rip stress. It's full of answers. like the 89 ACC championship where Danny Ferry and Duke tried to continue their dominance of the ACC in the 80s 
but tournament MVP J.R. Reed in the Tar Heels dispelled talk of their demise, winning an intense and bitter game 77-74. This year's ACC tournament begins March 9th, the hottest tournament in the country. The first game, NC State against Duke, 730 in the remodeled Greensboro Coliseum. After a few years in Charlotte, back to Greensboro, the legendary Dean Smith with 823 career wins. Won it last year. A loss tonight. He could be facing finishing fourth in the ACC for the first time in 31 years. Stack out with his own follow. He's so strong on the offensive boards. Would that be something to think about? You just mentioned North Carolina could be fourth, and all year long they've been either number one, two, or three in America. To show you the depth and show you how tough this conference really is. The ACC certainly loaded for bear as we head toward tournament time, and there's the travel. Can't turn it over in that situation. A little too free as we look at the monitor. Maryland with a game to go at Virginia tomorrow. The Terps win. Uh, they would win the ACC regular season outright. If they lose, however, North Carolina wins tonight. There would be a four-way tie. And with the tiebreaker, Wake Forest would end up as the first seed in the ACC tournament. And North Carolina would be number two with Maryland three and Virginia four. Meek with a foul now will be in the one and one. 17th foul against the Blue Devils. The Carolina Tar Heels have committed only four in the first half. I think an amazing statistic is the one we talk about. 31 consecutive years if they win tonight. They finish in the top three in the ACC for North Carolina. Also, 25 consecutive years of winning 20 games or more. Those numbers just are astounding. The message is, even in a conference as good as this, Teams come and go, except for North Carolina. They're hey. there every year. I had a battle inside today with several writers, and I really respect the writers down here because they know their basketball. But some people were telling me Rasheed Wallace may not make the all-conference team. Forget about it. There's no way in the world. The five best performers in this conference, Wallace Stackhouse, Duncan Smith, and Mr. Uh, Childress. Price with the jumper won't go. Parks tips it back out to Price. Dick, if they picked him by position, I don't think he would make it. Hey, no, you still try his best at the point, but they picked the five best performers. They tipped it in by Price. He's a kid that you see scored him all over. He's athletic, he's quick, he's got a nice touch. They've had other guys at that spot over the years, like Henderson, who give you that athletic ability. I really believe he's going to become a special player in Duke. Williams has been unable to hit the long-range shot so far tonight. Stackhouse way outside, goes baseline, cut off by Langdon, good defense. Jerry's got to work on putting the ball down a little lower on his deck when he dribbles. Stackhouse takes the long-range jumper, Wallace keeps it alive, and Wallace picks up the foul three on Rasheed Wallace, who protests the call. Rasheed gets called for that little push-off, and this is one area that he's really had to work on, is controlling himself inside. There he is having a little conversation with Dick Paparo. He really gets frustrated at himself, I think, more than ever. Look at him, the frustration now as he sits down with three. He's got to learn to control his emotions because he really could hurt himself. I thought he hurt himself in the Virginia game at the end of the game, getting frustrated with some calls that went against him. North Carolina, four out of 14 from long range. Duke is at seven of 11. That's what's kept the Blue Devils in here. They lead by one. Especially Langdon, he's had a great first half. Cable's hit a couple from outside. Inside the meet, back to Cable. With a runner. Hustle by me, got the ball back. Nearly lost. There's Langdon. Trajan Langdon just tearing it up 17 points. He had a career high 20 the first time these teams met. Somebody better tell him he can shoot the rock if he's able to square his body and get the good look at the hoop. He could be the fourth freshman since Mike Krzyzewski took over to average 10 points in his freshman year. There's the turnover. We step out of bounds. 21.8 seconds to go. The Delta Fawcett halftime report comes up. Of course, naturally a busy day in the top 25. Two schools to join the big dance scores and highlights from everywhere. A student with a chance for the last shot. A salute out to North Carolina A&T. And also Florida International, an amazing story. Of the of the dance. Here's the trap now, somebody's open. Reverse the ball, throw it diagonally. North Carolina likes to force the tempo, and Price hits the jumper just before the buzzer. A lot of emotion by Mr. Collins. Peter Goodnett's got to give us a smile one time. I want to see a smile. 
That is a huge first half for the Blue Devils here at Carolina. They lead it 44 to 38. Now let's check in with John Saunders. John? All right, Mike and Dick, thanks a lot. You'll see Pete got that smile if that score is still up by six by the time they blow the final buzzer. And welcome to the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. When we come back, we'll continue with more of Championship Week with some scores and highlights, including Randolph Childress, his final game at home at Wake, and Constantine at the Popa trying to fight his way into the tournament. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, brought to you by cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the old, get into the cold. And by Dodge, the more things change, the more things look like the new Dodge. Been thinking about a burger with bacon. Now, the word association test. Motherhood? Bacon. Chris Pot bacon is all I see. Relationship? Bacon. Need a bacon double cheese from Vicky D. Bus driver? Oh, bacon. Now, for a limited time, McDonald's Bacon Double Cheeseburger with savory, smoky bacon is just 99 cents, or make it an extra value meal for just $2.99. Let's break for lunch. Have you had your break today? <laughs> Leave it to Delta to design a stylish and practical faucet that works with you in perfect harmony. No matter what the situation. <laughs> Oh, honey, honey, honey. Party. Honey, though, I, I think I got this. Listen. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Yo, man. I could just dispatch the show. Oops, you know. Ladies, you know. <laughs> Watch this. Chantel is looking exquisite. But can she dream? Ball. Thumbs up, she got hair this is what I'm talking about, people. You can expect great things from the great taste of Miller Lite. Oh, here comes Sharice. Yes. Okay, she's doing the move. She shakes, she bakes, she goes up. She got a If we violate the laws of physics, will we be punished? Well, we did. We gave Stratus a new type of tire that offers the tread life and enhanced fuel economy of a tire engineered for efficiency, yet sticks to the road like a tire engineered for performance. A clear violation of physical law. Thus far, there have been no legal repercussions. New Dodge Stratus. It's full of answers. Duke has a lead at halftime over North Carolina. Welcome back to the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Let's get right to the scores and highlights. UConn on the road, wrapping up the regular season at Miami. For the Hurricanes, a chance to finish at 500. Well, they're at 500 guaranteed, but above 500 at 10 and 8 if they could come up with this win and perhaps a shot at the tournament. Constantine Popa, eight points in the first half. Jim Calhoun was doing a lot of that and watching a lot of this. Picking up technicals and getting tossed out of the game. His second technical... Gave him the early shower. Meantime, Kevin Norris knocking down this jumper just inside three-point range. Jerome Sheffer has eight points for UConn, but right now they're down by, you see that change on the fly, down by three. 30 to 27 is the score. Huskies can become first ever back-to-back -back outright Big East champions with a win tonight. Villanova is the only team with a chance to catch him, although Connecticut has wrapped up the number one seed. It's early, they have a five-nothing lead over Providence. Syracuse needs the win to have a chance at the number three seed because Georgetown is tied with them right now. They lead Boston College eight to four. NC State against Wake Forest, emotional day for Randolph Childress. Six Demon Deacon to have his number retire. And he's doing the dirty work on this play, setting the pick for Scooter Banks on the lob. Wake fly as many as 22. Childress with a three, third all-time leading score at Wake Forest. He had 17 in the first half. Then Childress again picks up the loose ball. Goes in for the easy layup. Demon Deacon fans will miss him. They didn't miss him today. 83 to 68, the easy win there. Tim Duncan had 21. Childress also had 21. Clemson knocks off Georgia Tech. And for Tech, perhaps their hopes of making the tournament starting to fade a little bit. 8 and 8, fifth in the ACC, and 18 and 11 overall. In the SEC, Alabama and Mississippi State, number 21 and number 14. Bubba Wilson misses jam. But Darrell Wilson finds the loose ball and knocks down a three-pointer. Bulldogs by as many as 10 in the second half. Bama comes back down 232nd. Artie Griffin's runner won't go. Antonio McDice can't control the rebound. And the crowd on the floor. Darrell Wilson with 35 points as the Bulldogs win it 
71-67, their 20th victory of the season. Auburn and Arkansas for the Razorbacks trying to play their way into form. They hope to make a run at the second straight national championship. They have the early lead here. LSU blown out by 47 by Kentucky. Tony Delk had 27 points, 6 of 8 from three-point range. On to the Big 8. Oklahoma and Missouri drawing up the plays for overtime. Five seconds left, tied at 81. Paul Alini with the leaner. Fouled, and it's good. Alini finishes with 20 points. Calvin Sampson a little worried. But Sammy Haley is psyched as he's fired up. The Sooners with one last chance. John Anches, desperation heave will not go. And Missouri hangs on for the win for Norm Sloan, Norm Stewart rather. 83 to 81 is the final. Sammy Haley finished with 23 points. Paul Olinney with 20 points. Purdue over Illinois, 69 to 56 is the final there. Conzo Martin with 29 points for the Illini. Are they in? 17 and 11, 8 and 8 right now. On to the Pac-10. Arizona State and Washington State. It's been a tough few days for Washington State. Isaac Burton nails the half-court shot. Washington State up at halftime, 39-33. Clock, watch the shot clock. It's not moving. Dominic Ellison gets enough time to knock down a three. Dominic Ellison with 30 points. Isaac Burton with 20 and a losing cause, 84-71. And Cal beaten by Oregon State, 83-67. Brent Ferry, a career-high 34 points and 8 rebounds as things continue to go south for Cal. When we come back, we'll continue with a look at Championship Week. Teams making their way into the field of 64. That and more as we continue on the Delta Faucet Halftime Report. This Halftime Report is presented by Delta Faucet and your dependable Delta Plumbing Professional. Together... They're the way water is brought to life. Nokia One Touch Dialing lets you call important numbers with one touch of one button. Emergency road services. Amazing. Nokia. Cellular phones. I got these eagle snacks. Eagle snacks. <laughs> eagle snacks. What you feed your face. One fall, we took out our son's favorite sweater, and it didn't fit anymore. I think life insurance is like that. You don't realize how much your life has changed until you take out your policies and sit down with your agent. That's why we have the State Farm Family Insurance Checkup. I can help you see if your coverages are up to date, or if you've outgrown them. Then you make the decision. A policy has to fit just like a sweater. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Championship week continues at 9.30 Eastern time. We'll crown yet another champion, another one in the field of 64, either Austin Peay or Murray State, Ohio Valley Conference Championship. Let's take a look now at the MEAC. North Carolina a t against Coppin State. Inbounds pass stolen by Tyrone Bryce. Pass to Phillip Allen. He gets the layup. It's tied at 61. 31 seconds left. John Floyd banks it in. Davis tied at 64 apiece. Crunch time now. Phillip Allen off the miss. Behind the back pass to John Floyd. He dunks this one down. 66 to 64. The ninth MIAC crown in 14 years for a &T. And for Coppin State, who had 20 wins during the regular season, they play one of the toughest schedules in the country. They will likely not go to the tournament. The Aggies had a losing record in the regular season, 12 and 14. Speaking of losing records, they'll have one going into the tournament, talking about Florida 
International, 68-57, and knock off Mercer. The worst ever record for a team in the field of 64, 11 and 18. Fairfield and Iona, number four seed Fairfield, number five Iona. Overtime in the quarters of the Metro Atlantic. Freshman Michael Sanders hits the desperation three. It banks and goes. Tied at 69. Fairfield coming back. Three seconds left. Greg Francis throws the shot up at the buzzer and rattles it in. Fairfield wins the wild one in overtime. 71 to 69. Francis leading Fairfield with 24 points. And a look at some more scores as we continue on Championship Week. Channel 2 Action News. Complete Georgia news coverage. We're live at Chopper 2, Channel 2 Action News. The best balance of local. Not everybody here supports what the county commission has done. Regional, national, and international news. We all want the best for our children. Now, John Pruitt joins Monica Kaufman and Don Farmer. They're professional, experienced. They're the anchors who know Georgia. John Pruitt, Monica Kaufman, and Don Farmer. Channel 2 Action News. Coverage you can count on. What do you give the person who has everything? A new car? A necktie? Bedroom slippers? Of course not. Give the gift of cable and give the gift of entertainment. Cable television provides year-round enjoyment at a price anyone can afford. From local programming to big-time sporting events and national and international news, plus the latest and best in hit movies, cable has it all. Make someone's day. Better yet, make their year with the gift of cable through a Scripps Howard gift certificate, available in various dollar amounts. Let Scripps Howard make your gift giving easier. Call us today for more information. Sport V6 has more. More horsepower. More shoulder room. More hip room. And more cargo room than a comparable Ford Ranger or Chevy S10. But you don't have to put everything you've got into it. Dakota Sport V6. A little bigger, a lot better. At America's truck stop, the new Dodge. NCAA women's basketball, a wild one between Duke and Virginia. 70-70, 10 seconds left. Amy Lofstad from three, gets it. Virginia by three. Duke, five seconds to get a basket. They get it in, up to the other end. And Kyra Orr taking the desperation shot. It goes, so we're headed to overtime. Cavaliers by one in overtime. Three seconds left. Orr again drives the pull-up jumper. It goes for the win. Or is the hero as Duke upsets Virginia 83 to 82. She had 24. Duke rallying from 20 points down at halftime to win. And the UConn women still unbeaten as they head towards the tournament. When plumbers hit the road, they carry more than a truckload of faucets and pipes. They carry knowledge about products. Like why the finishes and solid brass construction of Delta faucets are right for you. They carry knowledge about styles and knowledge about procedures and codes that tell you they're as committed to perfection as we at Delta are. In fact, there's only one thing as dependable as Delta faucets, and that's the plumber who installs them. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Today in Montana, the temperature will be absolutely perfect. It'll be perfect in Maine, and also in Minnesota. Because now, every oven in every Pizza Hut restaurant across America will be precisely calibrated to the perfect temperature for an absolutely perfect pizza every time. And as always at Pizza Hut, it'll be... Come back soon, Mr. Riskin. ...sunny and pleasant, even in Alaska. Hey, it's the stuff we're made of. This is Red Dog Beer. It's not ice brewed, fire brewed, and it's not some nursing sipping red. It's just genuinely good beer. Okay, there is one thing unusual about Red Dog. It's unusually easy to drink. Because it's bold yet smooth. Because it's made with the finest natural ingredients. Are you gonna like Red Dog? Yeah, we think so. But hey, it's your call. You a sports fan? Then you know what this is. All the games you're missing. How'd the Chiefs pull ahead? How'd Seattle blow out the Nuggets? Well, with DirecTV, you see the action, not just the scores. NFL, NHL, NBA, college, hundreds of games you probably couldn't get before. Games only on in other cities. Hey, 
You want numbers? Get a newspaper. You want sports? Get DirecTV. For your DSS 18-inch dish and DirecTV, see your RCA dealer. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, brought to you by Cadillac and your Cadillac dealer, creating a higher standard. Jim Calhoun tossed from the game at halftime. His squad is down by just two, 31-29. We'll keep you updated right now. Back to Mike and Dick. We're back in North Carolina where Duke is leading the Tar Heels 44 to 38. Nice to have you with us in the ACC, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Dick Vitale. Inside outside game for Duke. Trajan Langdon, a huge first half, and Eric Meek inside. Yeah, Meek did a great job inside, but it was Trajan Langdon and Capel knocking down three. There's a look at another three to Trifector, eight for 12. Now look at Eric Meek. He's going to go down in a post inside. He says, Bring me to Rock. I'm taking him with my left hand. I'm going to go right at Rashid. And there's the little left handed jump hook in the lane. Meek really hustled inside. The comparison of the centers, Wallace and Meek, and Eric Meek, you have to say, has the big advantage so far. And I'll tell you one thing, Rashid came out very active inside, but he picked up his third foul, and that could be big because North Carolina doesn't have depth. Take a look at the halftime stats. The three-point field goals, eight of 12 for Duke. Carolina hitting only four of 14 from long range, and Donald Williams is 0 for 4. Michael, obviously right here, three-point big, but this number jumps at me. North Carolina has shot 588 free throw attempts this year, and they're only on the line four for six. If you could keep them off the line, you got a shot to beat them. That means they're not attacking. If they're not getting to the free throw line, that means they're not attacking. Attacking the basket with Wallace and Stackhouse. Capel trapped at the baseline. Fortunate that the ball went out of bounds off of North Carolina. Also on Duke's side, they were up six, and they didn't have a great first half out of Parks offensively. Well, let's see if they'll go to Parks low a little bit more here in the second half. Capel got it. Starts the second half the way he started the game. Capel with five points, and the lead has grown to eight. Duke has really used that three-point shot this year. Steal by Price, what a move! He's got great Wallace speed. Trailing. He's got great speed, explosive player of the year last year in California. Biggest lead of the game for Duke, 48-38. Very big coming out out of the gate. When you start that second half, you get a little spurt, especially if you're the underdog and you're away from home. Boy, with this ease, some of the pain they've suffered all year long. Basket goes and the foul. That's what we call attacking the basket, Mike. He gets the ball and he attacks the goal, and that's why he goes to the foul line so often. Jerry Stackhouse is going to be in a little one-on-one -on -one maneuver. He comes off the screen, and then he beats Parks the basket. That's three on Eric Meek. He has been in foul trouble most of the year, fouled out seven times this season. And remember, they do not have Greg Newton as a backup anymore, so they get very small if they have to take either Parks or Meek out. Newton will be back after two semesters. He'll be coming back the second part of the summer. He said, I'm definitely returning to Duke. 48-41. Blue Devils by seven. 19 minutes to go in the game. See, right now in a matchup situation, Parks and Stackhouse slide Parks on the baseline or curl him in the middle and get him the basketball. Langdon against Williams had those 17 first half points. See, Stackhouse is not a great defensive player. I would bring the ball inside the park, so they missed him. He had a great roll inside. Shot clock at six. Price trying to take Calabria. Gets it to Parks. Nice pass. Hit the shot. Got the shooter's bounce. They got to bring the ball to him, but I believe he's got to go inside and take advantage of his strength around the basket. That's only four points for Cherokee Parks. Carolina answers quickly at the other end as McGinnis scores. McGinnis an excellent one-on-one -on -one player. They isolate, bring him around the wing. McGinnis has 10, averages nearly 13. There's Meek down the low again. Works from the left hand and spun out on it. Here comes McGinnis, head up. Trailman and the trailman, Mr. Wallace, finalizes. 
50 to 45, and the crowd is in it. Life, a great explosion to the bucket. Stackhouse with a foul. That's the part of his game he's got to really work on Langdon, taking the ball to the basket. He's an excellent stationary jump shooter, but he's going to be an attacker as well. Came out of Anchorage, Alaska, had so much publicity and notoriety. You had to figure the uh, strength of the competition he played against in Alaska, he would have to make an adjustment coming into college. Oh, you don't think it was like the level here? Probably not. <laughs> I would think you're right. I'll tell you what, he's a heck of a baseball player as well. Yes, he is. with the Padres. In fact, the Padres are playing, paying for his scholarship on the, uh, at the school. Hits the second one, 51 to 45. Trajan Langdon only two shy of his career high. 20 that he set against North Carolina in the first meeting. Miss Duke playing at 2-3 now. Playing at 2-3 matchup. Had a stretch where that zone really helped him in the first half. Calabria down low. Put it up too hard, fighting the rebound. Bodies everywhere. Look at that hustle and scrapping it, clawed. Calabria really upset that he missed the shot. It was a great look by McGinnis who split the seam of the 2-3. If you can get into the gap in the seam of a 2-3, you're going to create numbers and opportunities will be there. Possession error gives the ball back to North Carolina. See him split the seam? He splits two people. That means Meek has to step out. Here's the dunk down to Calabria. But here's where his lack of size didn't allow him to get the good look at the basket. 6-4 against 6-11. Stackhouse immediately double teamed out of that zone. Stackhouse is a great baseline player. He has tremendous agility along that baseline. Exactly what I'm let Jerry Stackhouse try to beat me from deep. Donald Williams 0 for 4 on three point shots in the first half. A miss there. Parks with a rebound. See, right now, if I'm Duke, I back the ball out and I say, Chief, you're our senior, you're our leader. We're going to bring the rock to you right in the boxes inside. Or I attack Wallace with three, who will not play me very tough down there in the lane with three fouls. Cherokee Parks with eight rebounds tonight. He does it every night. He's been tremendously consistent. Knocked away by Stackhouse. See, if they come out to the wing, Stackhouse has the advantage. He is quick. He can step in the passing lane. Donald Williams will get a breather as Pierce Landry comes in. It's so much easier to coach where we're sitting right now. But see, I would like this happening where Parks would step outside and here is Mr. Stackhouse right in the passing lane. Capel trying to take McGinnis more easily said than done. Got away from him. They're off the screen and hit it. Capel with that little jump shot, 15 foot range. He's Jeff got Capel has seven. He's got scoring ability. Was strong last year in a run for the national championship at the end of the year. The lead is eight. And Duke showing absolutely no signs of folding. Stackhouse stumbled on the way down the lane. Papara with the ball on Dante Calabria. There's Dean Smith poised on that sideline. What a career. 823 W's. 876 is the all-time record. He's number two. You know, Dick, the rate he wins games two years from, say, today, he could be going for the all-time record. I'd say that's pretty good odds it could happen. The lead is eight. Price. Strip. He's got three on one. He's explosive here. Good night. Langdon did the best thing, just got out of the way. Yeah, he's vicious in transition. 53-47, Meek at the high post, down the lane with a left hand. Eric Meek is having a whale of a game. That's a smart move by Eric Meek. Attack Rasheed Wallace with those three fouls. Landry. Oh, nearly picked off, and then Wallace got it. Strike the pay again, one great play after another. This is starting to look like the first one. Really special. Whenever you hook up North Carolina and Duke, this is hot college basketball, baby. Udo number one. Langdon with Landry on it. To the Parks on screen. To the Parks on it up. Parks, nice pass to Price for this. Holy cow, what a pass. Like, I can't believe it. It's one great play after another. We got reverse jams. We got reverse layup. We got transition jams. Tell you what, Duke may be the best two and 13 conference teams ever existed. Oh, I think there's no doubt about that. I think no doubt. Think about what we talked about at the top. 3.9 is the margin of differential. A 
as they bring the ball into Stackhouse. Stackhouse fouled by Parks. The other stat that jumps out, of, out at you, six of those losses have gone down to the last possession, and that's where the youth has killed them. They have made that mistake in the last minute. Does that tell you how good UCLA is, though? Yes, UCLA sir. UCLA put the really hurt on Duke. They just blew them away. That's the first time that I see the whole year where their heart was totally broken, and it became a layup drill. Eddie O'Bannon show. He was brilliant. 37 and 15, or 37 and 13 is, was his numbers. Stackhouse at the line. Dean Smith said he's played out of position at power forward. Still has averaged 19 points, 8 rebounds a game. It's a natural small forward, and that Sports Illustrated article they were talking about the possibility of Joe Smith maybe having a shot at coming to North Carolina when he was a high school senior. And what a front line that would have been. Wow. 57-51, Duke with 14.36 to go. Only one had the power of a bird called Parker. Only one has the passion of Maynard Ferguson. Only one had the fluid grace of Wes Montgomery. Only one plays like this. Seville STS with the North Star system. The great performers are always creating a higher standard. Been thinking about a burger with bacon. Now, the word association test. Motherhood. Bacon. Chris Pot bacon is all I see. Relationship. Bacon. Need a bacon double cheese from Bacon D. Bus driver. Oh, bacon. Now, for a limited time, McDonald's Bacon Double Cheeseburger with savory, smoky bacon is just 99 cents, or make it an extra value meal for just $2.99. Let's break for lunch. Have you had your break today? Bacon, 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 bacon. Don't let a new car payment be a financial burden. Get Smart Lease by GMAC. It just might give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. car payment get you all wound up. Get Smart Lease by GMAC. It can put a new spin on affordability. We have a lot of time between April and, and June to decide on, on anything after the season, but right now I have full intentions of being back in Chapel Hill. You'd love to see him come back, Dick, but you have to also be realistic about the dollars that are out there. $50 million for first one of the top three. That's in your league, baby. I mean, are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. That's unreal, those kind of dollars. And, you know, also the chance of injury. That's the real scare. As you look at the half-court trap. <laughs> Collins is in the game for the first time. Had a good first half. North Carolina trying to turn up the defensive intensity. Langdon for three. Offensive rebound by Capel with the save. Nice anticipation by Landon. McGinnis pushes it to Stackhouse. Oh, bad pass by Stackhouse. Now Duke running. Two on two. Capel for three. Yeah. Got to make that open shot because you're not getting the rebound. Capel with that good jumper. He's got to work a little bit more on dribble penetration, become a little bit more aggressive as an offensive player without the ball. Jeff Capel has 10, and what a huge turnaround that was. Wallace. Trying not to get his fourth foul as both he and Wallace are operating with three. He has a great touch around the basket, shooting 66% for the year, 63% in his career. That's the best ever for 300 attempts or more in the ACC by any point. Rob to Meek. He's got a pass. Wallace then lost. Would have been an easy two for Eric Meek if he could have controlled it. Here's Trajan Langdon with a hole. That's three on Trajan Langdon. On Trajan. We were talking earlier about the money. Look at this right here. Robinson gets 68 million. Kid 54 million. Hill 45. Danielle fourth pick 43. So when you project guys like Wallace and Stackhouse, they're top four picks. It's going to be very difficult for these kids. They can say they're coming back now, Mike. But with the possibility of a salary cap for rookies, I think it's going to be very difficult for them and Joe Smith to come back to school. Shaman Williams in will try a three. Long rebound to Donald Williams. Although, to be honest with you, Dick, I don't think any three would step in to be superstars right away. I don't think their bodies are ready yet. Well, physically they're not, but financially.
especially when you look at that table. How do you tell a kid like Jerry Stackhouse who comes from a family of 11 that maybe I should take a chance to play for good old Carolina? Oh, oh. Park's got it in low with a miss, and Eric Meek tipped it in. Eric Meek is just having a sensational game inside. He has a dozen. Well, I think he can bring big numbers here in the second half because Wallace doesn't want that fourth. And he has nine rebounds. And there's Donald Williams with the long-range box. He makes big shot after big shot. Look, he shaved his head. He wants to make my old Kojak team. Look at him. Donald yeah. Williams shaved his head for his last hurrah as a senior. And here comes Wojciechowski in for the first time for Duke. Tough little competitor at the point guard slot. And here comes the pressure. Even with Cherokee Parks having an off night offensively, Duke already has four players in double figures. See, Cherokee to me is not hungry enough inside to want the ball down in deep. He's become a drifter. He wants to play on a perimeter. Go inside. Bad pass by me. Just threw the one-hand baseball pass. Stackhouse knocked away by Collins. Out to Carolina with 12-18 to go in the game. It's a six-point lead. McGinnis comes back in, and Shimon Williams will sit down. You know, that for the comment you made a little bit earlier as we look at the turnovers, Michael Wolfhard is an outstanding writer in Washington. He wrote a whole column about these young kids and how they're really not ready in terms of their ability level, in terms of the, the endurance, the stamina, the beating you have to take. But then again, as you said, and he also made the point, the money is just so astronomical. Okay, you'd be a superstar at your bank no matter what. Loose ball steal by Parks. And a foul. It's going to be on Calabria. And he protests the call from Lenny Works. Calabria can't believe it. Oh, if I only had his hair. If I only had his hair. Look at that crop of hair. Wow, I'd be a TV star. If you only had oh, two of them. Oh, look at that ball dome I have versus his hair. Look at my shiny dome. Oh, why couldn't the man upstairs give me hair like Calabria? We can sell space on it. I know. Don't tell people. <laughs> yeah, they're right. liable to do it. <laughs> Collins for three. Price, Scott for the rebound, and it's picked off by Capel. Oh, screen. Look at the screen by Stackhouse. Oh, what a smart play by Stackhouse. He knows that he's the leading shooter for three-point range in the nation. 54%, and he lays the screen for Mr. Calabria. Dante has eight. The lead cut to three. Look at the Chief, playing like a little guard. The Chief wants to be a guard tonight. Crowd's really in it now. Cherokee, go inside. Price, contact, steal. Wallace, Wojciechowski is back. was touched on the waist and turned his body sideways and I got to give I got to give the shooter the latitude to stay up there and not hurt himself I don't like guys hanging on the rim I think it, it, it's childish and it's showboating but I think in this case if you were intentionally fouled like he was by Wojciechowski I think you've got to give him the benefit of the doubt and I say amen to that call unless you're clearly sure he was hanging on here to showboat the numbers on Wallace he can tie the game uh, missed I told you everything you know about TV is about to change because now there's direct TV, totally digital television. More movies, more sports, more of what I want than ever before. All through a tiny satellite dish about the size of a small pet. Stay. With digital quality video and CD sound, everything's gonna look great. How does direct TV work? I have no idea. But it does. 
Get your DSS 18-inch dish and direct TV at your RCA dealer. Only one defined agility like Edwin Moses. Only one embodied control like Evelyn Ashford. Only one personified endurance like Frank Shorter. Only one runs like this. Seville STS with the North Star system. The great performers are always creating a higher standard. I'd have to say Larry is my best friend. The guy is a maniac for sports. He loves to play football. That's his sport. And he's the boss. And he'll never, really ever leave now, a game huh? early. What is this, the Arctic Bowl? He's rolling out the tarp with him. Larry! But all my life, Larry's always done me big favors. Mike, Diane, Diane, Mike. Hi. Very big favors. Yes. Cheers, buddy. When you're with a friend as good as Larry, shouldn't you have a Heineken? Missouri Valley Conference quarterfinals. Southwest Missouri State against Illinois State. Down by three. Johnny Murdoch with a chance to tie. It won't go. And Illinois State hangs on for the three-point win. Mike and Dick. Got two of them, right? 63-62 North Carolina over Duke. That matches Carolina's largest lead tonight. One point. Jerry Stackhouse on the follow of the missed free throw gives him the lead. Here's an earlier great point. Freeze it. Right there. Look at this screen. He gives his body up because this is the best. Right there, three-point shooter in America. Calabria squares his body. And that gave him Uncle Mo. Momentum's on her side. Hey, this is deja vu all over again. Full court pressure. Capels handled the ball very, very well. And McGinnis almost got it there. Now he did. He got it from behind. This could be a rocky turn right now for Duke. Uncle Bo is on Carolina's side. They need to stop here, the Blue Devils. And McGinnis will back it out with 10.41 left. I think they're going to try to isolate Wallace inside. There he is on Parks, takes it off the dribble, but threw it away. Right now, without Newton, they can't rotate three people, so fatigue is set in for Parks and also me. Langdon, back to Meek, wasn't expecting it, and he throws it away for the second time straight, but he touched the ball. Wallace got hurt right there. May have gotten slapped in the face. You know, you look at Rasheed Wallace and Stackhouse, the possibility that they would go in the pro draft, and we'll take a look and see if we can tell. There's Meek the on the follow-through. There's Meek, yeah, makes contact accidentally. <laughs> thinking of Stackhouse and Wallace come out in the sophomores. Donald Williams is going to be gone. That's three of the five starters. And you wonder initially if Dean Smith would have some good recruits coming in. But that's like asking the Pope if he's going to go to services this weekend. Well, they're the one school that can get healthy so quick because they can recruit and attract people. They're in a hunt right now for Vince Carter. Mr. the basketball on a Daytona Beach, Florida. So is Duke, Florida, Florida State. But I think it's going to be Carolina or Florida State. Donald Williams with a tough pull-up jumper. He has from the three. Donald Williams takes big shots. He's a clutch shooter. Cherokee Parks now working down low on Stackhouse. That's where he should be. The lob to Meek. That's smart basketball. That's Duke basketball. Bringing the ball inside, taking advantage of their size. 14 for Eric Meek. The lead cut back to one. With Wallace out, he can really attack on the baseline. McGinnis for three. Long rebound to Stackhouse. He's such a strong player. Really draws contact. Price will be called for the foul. I think of these numbers here. North Carolina is 388, 582 on a free throw line. Their opponents are 209 for 298. They have made almost 100 more free throws than their opponents have attempted. On the other side, when we look at Duke right now, their opponents have attempted 544 free throws against them, as opposed to North Carolina only having 298 of them attempted against them. I know those numbers start to run, but they tell a story. They have made a living off the free throw line for years and years and years. Stackhouse hits the free throw. 20 points, has six offensive rebounds tonight. Very active. He had a great story. He had a technical call earlier this year. When he walked off the court, his mom was waiting for him. And his mom says, hey, no technicals. I don't need my son acting like that. Get to know the referee. He said, since then, I tell the ref when I'm back, 
over the free throw line. Wallace with the save, tosses it back into Williams. Quite a play. Could be a dangerous play in that case, but it worked out. North Carolina, as usual, getting a lot of loose balls. They lead by 2, 9, 0, 7 left. Price trying to stay with McGinnis does a great job. Calabria lucky to get the ball and just goes through everybody's hands. I think Calabria, if he can catch the rock and he squares his body, it's like automatic. He's got the great follow through and touch. Capel for three, rushed that one. Meek with a rebound and he is fouled. Who gets it? It's going to be McGinnis. And be that's a break. If it was on Wallace, it would have been his fourth. They need to be a danger time right now for Duke. They have to show a little bit more patience offensively and make this game go to the wire. If they shoot the ball quickly, they can get into a spurt right now in North Carolina and blow this open. Well, you know, that wasn't the shot that Capel wanted. Let's see. But oh, as Wallace reaching over the top. Oh, Wallace, very fortunate that the foul was called on McGinnis and not him. We'd like to see them get the parts down low or Meek again. He's been so successful. He's going to go to a half court trap and a bad pass. Forced the turnover. Those are the things that didn't happen during the Coach K era when you had the little guy out at the point named Bob Hurley. They were making all the big plays. You don't see a Hurley and a Hill and a Leitner. I mean, those guys were fantastic superstars. Seven out of nine years for the final four. McGinnis spins but comes up short on the shot. Four-point lead. Duke's had only two points in the last five minutes. See, now Parks has got to be their leader. He's got to go inside. He wants the ball now. Bring him the ball inside. Knocked away from Meek by Wallace. He thought Meek touched it last. He's really been a little bit inactive tonight, Cherokee, but that was one possession where he wanted the ball in deep, and they didn't have good vision to get him to basketball. Parks has only four points, two out of 11 shooting. Two points in the first half, two in the second. But well, he's really drifted on the perimeter tonight. Langdon, who's been on fire, missed that one. Meek nearly with a sensational follow. Stackhouse with a good rebound. Williams for three. Biggest lead of the night for Carolina. Place wait for the next dead ball at the break. Duke needs a good shot. Oh, they're fired off. There's a rejection by Stackhouse. Parks for three. Oh, Langdon oh. kept it alive. Rebound to Stackhouse. He's got Stackhouse trailing. He's got Stackhouse trailing. Oh, hey, sometimes you can wait. You better get a T.O. You can't wait for a dead ball. Look blow this open. The biggest lead of the night for North Carolina. The spurt the fans have waited for all night has just arrived. He blocks the shot. What can he do? And then he jams, Mr. Patrick. For the best south of the border cuisine, visit Acapulco Bay, now open on Broad Street. Delicious dishes like sizzling fajitas will tempt your taste buds. You'll find traditional Mexican dishes uniquely prepared by our chef, along with specialty sandwiches and much more. Stop in for daily lunch specials or join us for dinner and check out our drink specials. Come by and see what all the excitement is about. Acapulco Bay, an island paradise right here in downtown Rome on Broad Street. Right now, we are a typical group of middle school students. We have questions. We want to know what the world has to offer. But did you know that of the 18 of us in this class, six of my friends won't graduate high school? Did you know from this club of Dragon Country wants to help change that? Be cool, stay in school. Be cool, stay in school. This announcement is brought to you by the Junior Optimus Club of Dragon Country and Scripps Howard. All the work, commitment, passion, and practice is put to the test. That moment of truth when spirit and drive define in a split second whether or not the dream will become reality. Championship Week on ESPN continues tomorrow with the Northeast Conference at noon, followed by the Southern Conference at 7.30. Championship Week on ESPN. Every game counts. More Championship Week coverage from the Colonial Athletic Association, Richmond and UNC Wilmington. 
breaking the press here. Jared Stevenson finishes at the other end. And Richmond pulling off the upset, 58-54. Now back to Mike and Dick. All right, thank you, John. And North Carolina is on a 20-2 run in just the last 5-14. Just feel that electricity. You can feel the spurt. Sometimes you wait for that timeout. And it's over. Now they're going to go to their half court trap. And Duke needs a good shot in the worst one. Langdon for three. And there it is. Trajan Langdon has just had a new career high. 21 points. That was excellent execution. Bringing the ball to the inside. Attacking in the lane. And Cherokee making the good look to the perimeter. Quickly cuts the lead to six. They need to stop right here. they got to dig down. Donald Williams trying to answer the three. Parks rebound. Throughout Mike Krzyzewski's career, they've always been able to be a team to come up with a big defensive stop. Parks hasn't done much scoring tonight, but he does have nine boards. He wants the lob. They missed him. Cherokee was open. Collins dumps it to Langdon. Here comes McGinnis. Two on three. Now three on three. They always have trail people in their secondary phase of the break. Williams' is favorite spot just inside the free throw line. Donald has 15. That's the secondary phase in a running game. If the initial wave doesn't convert, they bring the ball back out to the trailer for the open jump shot. Pete Gaudet up off the bench calling the play. So great to hear Mike Krzyzewski is going to have a press conference Monday. And you know Mike is going to have that back. Parks fouled by Stackhouse. That's two on Stackhouse. That's going to be wonderful to have him back. He says he's feeling fine. Yeah, people see him around the office as we look right here. Parks having a tough night offensively. Two for 13. Jerry Stackhouse, his stock keeps going up, up, and away. Just like your stocks. They keep going up, up, and away. Hey, it's been great working with you all year. It's our last time together. My pleasure. Yeah, they got me going in the studio. I can't wait to get my buddy John Saunders and give me any airtime. Hey, your tan's going to fade the next three weeks. I know. Do you think he'll give me the AT in the airtime? He and Digger, I'm going to give me the airtime. Will they give you airtime? <laughs> Parks hits the first. He'll get another eighth in the ACC in free throw shooting. He's a tremendously complete player. Missed the second one, though. And he's had a solid senior year, despite the fact that the team has not won. His value along the, along the a lot of NBA people have really risen. He game. certainly hasn't had the complimentary players around him. 544 to go in the ballgame. See how it's wide open in a 2-3 at the foul line. Parks has got to step up. And that leaves Wallace down inside, hanging to the offensive rebound position. Screen for Calabria. Couldn't get his shot. Shot clock at six. They spread the court. Good spacing. McGinnis, nice jump stop. Bang down on him. Going everywhere. Wallace, shot won't go, but he's fouled. Boy, McGinnis really got hit when he went for the loose ball. What a year in the ACC when you talk about big people. Joe, he's not ordinary. Mr. Smith, Tim Duncan, Rasheed Wallace, three second year players. Tomorrow, Maryland and Virginia. What a game that'll be. I'm going to see the UCLA Bruins tomorrow against Louisville. Louisville needs a big win. If they get a win there, they remain in the hunt for an NCAA berth. They've beaten Kentucky. They lost four games in a row without Samaki Walker. He's back right now. I'll be watching Maryland, Virginia. <laughs> That's going to be a great game, no question. Harold Dean and company. What a job Jeff Jones has done. Look at the free throws right here. Carolina only to the line 13 times. Talk to Dean tonight, and he said he has three priorities when the season starts. Number one, qualify for the NCAA tournament. Two, win the regular season. Three, win the ACC tournament, and then win the national championship. 76-68, Cable for three! And the three-point shot has helped Duke a lot this year. Kept them close. Cable has 13, a lead five. He said on the top of the show, they got to make threes to be able to hang with North Carolina. Langdon and Cable have done it. Let's put some points on the board early. Williams. Tough shot. He buried it. What a big shot. Not a great shooter. He would not be classified if you were to project him for the next level as a great shooter, but he is a scorer. Capel with penetration. He's fouled on the way in. Capel's dad is doing a great job at Old Dominion. There's his career numbers right now. Playing his last game as a senior here was the MVP in the 93 Final Four against Kansas and Michigan. Did he shoot the lights out there? 
Shimon Williams and Pierce Landry check in as we get out of the stretch, 442. And Dean Williams, uh, Dean Smith, as his starters back on the court. You got to really right now, if you do, take advantage of some of the matchups that exist with them going to the bench. 78-71. Capel open for three. Calabria with a long rebound. Good offensive. Shot by Capel. Good rebound position by Calabria. Williams in the lane. He's on every one of those things. Yeah, he's automatic. If he can float in that three-second area and get in that lane with that good jump stop, he's really tough to handle. 80 to 71. Duke right now hanging on the ledge. Parks got the roll. About time. Cherokee went inside. Little jump up. Right now, Duke's got to come up with a stop. And if you're North Carolina, you've got to use some time to go to a high percentage shot like Wallace or Stackhouse. Stackhouse with a huge attempt at the jam, fouled by Moore. It's a good foul by Tony Moore. I'll tell you, Michael Jordan told me he was so impressed playing against Stackhouse one on one. And by the way, you should see Jordan driving the ball now. They got a great hitting coach down there by the name of Walt Hereniak, and he works with him in the cage. And I'm going to tell you something. He is not slapping at the ball. He is driving the ball now. You know, I am very proud of Michael Jordan. Everybody said there was no way he was going to stick with baseball. Look what he has done. No matter how it turns out, he gets just a tremendous amount of credit for hanging in there the way he has. There he is converting that free throw. Look at the replacement players. Let's get the real ones down there. Jimmy Leland and Gene, Gene Lamont. I talked to them the other day. You know what they want to talk about? Basketball. Everybody wants to talk hoops now. It's March Madness. No replacement players here. Oh, this guy is flat out a superstar. If you talk all American teams, Stackhouse, who may not be a first team all American, he's going to get some votes. Let a new car payment be a financial burden. Get smart lease by GMAC. It's an affordable way to drive off with a new GM vehicle. And it might even give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. You started putting money away from my college when I was little, right? Smartest thing I ever did. I guess I gotta start thinking about stuff like that. Talk to my guy, Payne Weber. He got you through college. Broker? Do I want to be in stocks right now? I thought the same thing when I started saving for you. But he showed me if I was looking long term, and the only place to be is in the market. And he'll know that's what I'm looking for. He'll know. Because he'll ask. Only one combines power and effortless performance like Fred Couples. Only one blends pinpoint control and the ability to read the terrain like Lee Trevino. Only one personifies endurance like Arnold Popper. Only one can play like this. Seville STS with the North Star system. The great performers are always creating a higher standard. In the Big East, UConn and Miami at Miami. Kevin Ollie will start the break for UConn. And who do you find? Who else? But Ray Allen, number 34. He does the rest of the work. UConn's lead, though, is just one with six and a half to go. Mike and Dick. Yeah, I don't do blowouts. Three fifty-three to go in the game. North Carolina by nine. Each possession becomes more and more critical for the Blue Devils, who have had so many heartbreaking last-minute losses. Double overtime to Carolina. Double overtime to Virginia. Two to Maryland twice. They're going to get close enough here to be heartbroken. Eighty-two to seventy-five. Now again, they go inside the corners. I really felt that he would have established himself down inside. He would have put big numbers on the board because there's no way that Stackhouse can handle him down in the box. Parks now has nine, and North Carolina spreads the floor. They do this so well. Spread the floor, try to isolate people. Now they're going to try to get it to Wallace inside. Run some time off the clock, and then bring it to the interior. McGinnis trying to penetrate shot clock at eight. Williams, another one of those. Nothing but net. I'll tell you, NBN, nothing but nylon is 
just the way he floats. He throws that little rainbow floater up in the air. 21 for Donald Williams, averages nearly 15 a game. Parks in low to Capel. Capel with a hanger on the left. Nice dribble maneuver by Jeff Capel. Duke's going to have excellent perimeter people returning next year and wing people. They just need some strength on the interior. 84 77 approaching the two and a half minute mark. What a lift psychologically when they get Michael K back. And that is, again, nothing to this coaching staff. They'd be the first to tell you, Peter and Michael Gray and Tom Amica, how much they miss Coach K on that sideline. Uh, you'd miss somebody that had seven points in the last 10 years. Wallace, what a way to get the ball inside. Rasheed, it blows my mind to believe that he was 0 for 3 against Wake Forest. That is remarkable, isn't it? What a credit to Davey Odom and his gang who were able to suffocate him. Price wheels inside, block. Nice follow by Eric Meek, who has hustled so hard tonight. You talk about a kid that's gotten better and better. If he had only one more extra year of college basketball, what a player I think he could become. 16 points tonight for Meek. It's back to seven, and now you've got to think about fouling. Only a minute 42 to go. you got to really trap, and that's the one area they've struggled a little bit this year, North Carolina, the foul line. This either one of these teams shoots the ball that well. Exactly. This guy has been such a steady performer, Jeff McGinnis. Shot clock at seven. McGinnis has to force one from the baseline and made it anyway. Warm up the bus, baby. Warm up the bus. That one there puts you away. 12 for McGinnis. That one there is the killer. Now it's going to be a three-point and free-throw shooting contest. That was the killer. The Dukies made a gallant effort here tonight. Parks for three and hit it. Get a timeout. That's uh, a two. 101 left. 88-81. So have you made any decisions yet? I'm thinking about taking the job up at Meyer and Hope. Really? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot less than I was making, but there really isn't much out there. I'm sure we'll be fine. You remember about seven, eight years ago, we talked to Craig Miller over at Payne Weber, and he thought there were some things we should do to make sure that we're covered. Jack's college, paying off the house, so things are going to be okay. Lucky he knew what we needed. He knew because he asked. You a sports fan? Then you know what this is. All the games you're missing. How'd the Chiefs pull ahead? How'd Seattle blow out the Nuggets? Well, with DirecTV, you see the action, not just the scores. NFL, NHL, NBA, college, hundreds of games you probably couldn't get before. Games only on in other cities. Hey, you want numbers? Get a newspaper. You want sports? Get DirecTV. For your DSS 18-inch dish and DirecTV, see your RCA dealer. Xavier unbeaten during the regular season in their conference in a quarterfinal battle with Wright State. Xavier up by one. Final second. Rainey sends it down the floor. Harriman with the catch. The shot goes. It's good. It's good. It's good. Unbelievable finish. Xavier knocked out on their home floor. Mike and Dick. Hey, wow. John, we see it every year, and it's still so much fun to watch, isn't it? Wow, but I'll tell you one thing. Xavier better get a bid after the kind of year they had. That's just amazing. Unbelievable. Skip Ross does a great job. Look at the ACC here, Mike. Here's the way this stand. Maryland plays at Virginia tomorrow. If the Terps win, they win the ACC regular season. They would be the number one seed in the tournament. Wake Forest, by virtue of the tiebreaker, would be number two. If Virginia wins, however, it's a four-way tie for the first time ever for the ACC regular season tie. And Wake Forest, by virtue of the tiebreaker, is the number one seed. You're going to see a lot of fouling right now. You're going to stop the clock if you do. Where's the ball? Jowski oh. went for the steal, but he had the foul. Didn't. Oh. Smart play by Rasheed. Bring the ball out. Spread the court. There's the contact. Got to watch the intentional. Now you know, Calabria fouled by Price. You know what's interesting, as you mentioned there about the matchups, North Carolina State plays Duke in that play-in game, and then they come back and they play the number one seed, which is either Maryland or Wake. They realistically, it's not out of the realm of a possibility. Duke can win those two games. Oh, yeah, I have no doubt about it. They've come so close. Coming up next, of course, the Ohio Valley Conference Championship. Austin P gets into the title of Murray State. Six great years they've been in the championship game. 
Duke is out of timeouts, by the way. Miss Calabria on the line. He's got great touch. You know, I was talking all Americans earlier about stack guys. If I picked my Super Six All American team, I would go with Wallace. I would go with certainly Joe Smith. I would go with Ed O'Bannon. I would go with Stoudemire and Ruskin as the guards, and Jerry Stackhouse, my sixth man. Calabria makes them both, and now Duke needs threes. Down by 9, 48 seconds left. Capel will take one from a mile oh, out. Made it. They should give him five on that, baby. Holy mackerel. Got a foul. Got to stop the clock. Got a foul. What a steal. There's the pick. Got to hit the three right here. Capel. That would have been a huge. That would have cut it to two. It this could have been a two-point game. And when he took that shot, the bus driver was just turning the engine off. He was turning it off, but right now he started it again. But a trip right down here to Durham. Cherokee Parks in his last regular season game in college. He has been a warrior. 12 and a half points, six point rebounds a game all his entire career. Second all time in blocks, though, only Mike Jaminski. 11 points for McGinnis tonight. Excuse me, 11 points and nine rebounds for Parks. McGinnis at the line, hits the first. You know, one thing that is deceptive about North Carolina's free throw percentage, in the last half of the year, they seem to make everything at the end of the game yeah, when it counts. They got better and better as the year progressed on that free throw line. You know, you mentioned Parks and his numbers, and his numbers certainly have been a lot higher this year than in the past, but I'll tell you one thing. He preferred the winning that they went through rather than the losing. But he's a great kid, too. 92-84, 30 seconds to go. Langdon will try a three. Air ball. Calabria with a rebound and the foul with 21-7. And that should do it. An eight-point lead for North Carolina. And they will assure themselves of at least a time for second place in the ACC regular season. North Carolina certainly still has a great shot to be a number one seed in the East. I think Kentucky will get the Southeast, Kansas the Midwest, and UCLA will get the West. The question is, if Arkansas runs the table, and let's say North Carolina and Connecticut lose fairly early in their postseasons, Arkansas can steal a number one seed. Carolina is at 16 out of 21 tonight from the free throw line, over 75%. You know, I got to get this out, too. Purdue has a big win today over Illinois. GK always says, I never mentioned Purdue. He says he can't say Purdue. Purdue, Purdue, Purdue. Katie, I know Purdue. I know Conzo Martin got 29 today. I do know about Purdue and a great job you're doing. Conzo Martin, for my money, the best 6'6 defender in college basketball. He just shuts everybody down. Here comes Solomon will come in, the senior. Big hand for Stackhouse as he leaves. Well, the big question, somebody yelled to you and I when we came to the parking lot today. Said, is tonight sophomore night? That's right. Could this be the last time you see Stackhouse and Wallace? Langdon breaks to the basket as they guard against the three-point shot. The lead cut to eight, 16 seconds left. Sullivan foul with 14.1 seconds left. I think I have a better chance of growing here on the top of my bald head than seeing Wallace and Stackhouse back in the North Carolina uniform next year. I heard Brent Musburger ask you last weekend if you did bar mitzvahs, and you said <laughs> no. I know you would do bar mitzvahs, but you wouldn't do a brisk. <laughs> Mr. Grossberger praises you like crazy. I don't know. He's a PR guy. He the feeling me. is mutual. He tells me what a start. I'm like Patrick Luna crowd cheering here. Senior night, Donald Williams, who's had so many great games, and a young man who really has made a comeback. Struggled last year with his shot. He's got the touch back now. There's the big hug by Phil Ford. 16 of his 21 in the second half. Sullivan gets on the board for go to New Jersey. Dean Smith, another W. And Tress is so sharp. All GQ. Now, Sullivan obviously back in uniform, but this is not the Pat Sullivan we remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not the kid that was such a good role player, but just having to back out the courage to be able to come back. And what a hand he gets. What a hand. And the hug from Dean Smith. Bill Guthrie. Guthridge gives him the hug. McGinnis. Light up. And then he runs and gives some high fives to his buddies. His buddies. And another W here. Yes, North Carolina and Duke. It's always special. The Tar Heels 
sweep the series on the year and win their fifth in a row overall. The final here, 99-86, North Carolina over Duke. For Dick Vitale and our entire ESPN crew, thanks for watching, everybody. Let's go to John Sumner. All right, Mike and Dick, thanks a lot. Not as good as the first game, but still a great one as Duke puts on a terrific performance on the road and comes up short once again. A reminder, game number two of the three here tonight as we move back into the championship mode, Ohio Valley Conference championship game. Austin P taking on Murray State. That one is coming up at 9.30 Eastern time. Let's take a look at a big game in the Big East. UConn holding a four-point lead over Miami. Less than a minute to go. Miami trying to play their way into the tournament right now. We're going to go out to Miami Arena in just a moment and bring you an update of that game. But UConn has just scored again. 70 to 65 is the score in that contest. Stick around. We'll keep you updated. Right now, elsewhere in the Big East, Villanova facing Providence. Villanova's already nailed down the number two seed. They can do no better than that, no worse than that. But tonight, wrapping things up in the Big East regular season as they took on Providence. Jonathan Haynes up court and simply just throws the ball away as he's looking for Kerry Kittles. Kittles off the baseline, and he does likewise, throws it away. Villanova, 13 turnovers in the first half. Jonathan Haynes for three, knocks it off the glass. And then at the buzzer, knocks one down again as Providence had the lead for much of the first half in this contest. But at halftime, it was 30 to 29 Villanova. And right now, Nova has a two-point lead, 47 to 45. Still plenty of time left in the game. Franklin Western, 12 points at halftime. The Friars haven't scored more than 80 points, though, in 14 consecutive games. And Syracuse in a battle with Boston College. Syracuse, Lawrence Boat and his family on hand. His final game at the Carrier Dome. Michael Lloyd to Otis Hill to John Wallace inside for the dunk. Syracuse, nine of their first 13 shots. Lucius Jackson steps up, nails down a three. Orange up 26-17. Then Lawrence Boat from deep. Orangeman had a healthy lead at halftime. Syracuse trying to nail down the number three seed in the Big East. Georgetown, of course, is tied with Syracuse coming in, and Georgetown will play at St. John's tomorrow, 57 to 38. Syracuse has the lead. Lucius Jackson with 12 points. Orange, though, have lost five of their last seven games. Pittsburgh and Seton Hall. Seton Hall struggling down the stretch. 64 to 56, they trail to an undermanned pit team with seven minutes left. A couple of weeks ago, it looked like Seton Hall was headed to the tournament. Right now, it looks like they're headed towards the NIT. All right, we reminded you that UConn was taking on Miami. UConn already the number one seed in the Big East tournament. Miami hoping for a shot at making the field of 64. Let's get out for the final seconds. Two scores, so they got to get a quick. You don't need the three right away. Popa sent a high screen, then it'll roll low, and that's what they like to go to. Miami was down by five to pit Tuesday night and came back to tie it in overtime. Frazier three, in and out. Travis Knight, let's see, what do we got? He stepped out. Miami still has a life with 29.4 seconds to go, down five. Connecticut usually plays two, three out of bounds. It'll be interesting if they go man, but it looks as if they're going. Need a couple of scores. Norris launches a three. Short. Norris got the rebound. Who's it out on? It's out on. Let's see. Jimmy Burr's going to overrule. Jimmy Burr saw it. He hit the angle. Said it went off the leg of Travis Knight. Good angle. You see how he dick him in calling out the defense. Jimmy Burr, one of the top officials in the country, saw the call. The ball went off of Knight's leg, and he caught it. And it's stolen. Kevin Ollie has got it. He'll shoot a couple. The inbound sloppily done by Miami. Connecticut. Comes away with it, up by five with 19 four to go. Kevin Ali, senior leadership, comes up with a big play. Howie Dickerman, look at his shirt. There's the rebound right in. Knight rebound. Let's watch it. Yes, it did hit Knight. Good call, Jimmy Burr. Well, Kevin Ali going on the line. He's an excellent foul shooter, also along with Donnie Marshall. 83 percent for. Kevin Ollie, he is third in the conference. Check that tie for second with Andre Ulrich of Pittsburgh. Big moment. There's one. A lot of heroes on this Connecticut team. And of course, we talked about Travis Knight. He's done it all night long. But Ali has risen. He made a big three for them to put it to four. In and out. Popa rebound. 71-65. Clock running down. They need two scores. Edwards crying for the ball. Norris takes it right to the hole. There's one score. They call timeout. Hey, folks. Welcome to March, huh? <laughs> Here it is. 
12.7 seconds to go. A four-point Husky lead. We'll return to Miami Arena after these messages. So UConn trying to come up with a win and have the outright championship in the Big East. They'd be the first team ever to do it two consecutive years for Miami if they lose. Likely no shot at making the field of 64 unless they run the table in the Big East tournament. But with a win tonight, if they can somehow squeak it out, they may get there. All right, let's take a look at some more scores as well. Auburn taking on Arkansas. The Arkansas Razorbacks are the defending national champions. They've struggled throughout much of the year. And look at this one. Down by 10 in the second half, only 34 points with 16 minutes remaining. Corliss Williamson did have 12 at halftime. The Tigers, though, have won their last four games against ranked teams. So perhaps we shouldn't be surprised. Minnesota and Northwestern, another dismal year for Northwestern. Down by 9, 57 to 48. Still 11 plus minutes left there. Yell against Pan Pan, as you know, the Ivy League champ. They haven't lost in conference in three years. They're in the field of 64 and their 21st victory of the season, 82 to 57. In the Atlantic 10, playing for a chance to face UMass. Duquesne knocks off Rhode Island, 82 to 69. Kenya Hunter had 28 points, so the Dukes get UMass. They will play them tomorrow. All right, let's take you back out right now to Miami Arena where UConn is clinging to a lead over top of the Hurricanes. The Miami Hurricanes trying to find their way in to the NCAA tournament. Final seconds. Connecticut, there's the foul given. Now Miami's got to catch the quick foul. No alternative here, but I'll tell you what. Nobody on that floor, you really can foul and say, hey, they're not going to make it. Shepard go to the line. He's got ice water in his face, you this bet. guy. Connecticut, a 76% team from the line that's best in the Big East. Here's Sheffer. Got 10 points. He's been solid tonight. Howie Dickerman. He's done a great job, Howie Dickerman. I tell you, he's battled many wars up at up in stores, and tonight was one of his biggest. And of course, Carl Hobbs alongside of him. Super job coming back. A tough situation. Down 17 to 8. They pulled it up, but this team is not number four, Brandon. They're tough. That's right. They're and a good basketball team. Sure 73-67. Right. Final 10 seconds. Norris missed. Rebound, Sheffer, and he's fouled with 3.4 seconds to go. Put this one in the bag, folks. Connecticut will run its record to 23 and 3, 16 and 2, and the outright Big East Conference regular season championship back to back for the Huskies. And congratulations to Jim Calhoun. His staff, the players, and everybody at the University of Connecticut. Super job, Dave. No doubt about it. Take a look at the Husky fans. They filled up and lit up this arena. And you see, he's been having some problems with his ankles. And here you see him slide off, and you need him, but he's at the line. He is a tough hombre right here. Also, congratulations to Miami. They're going to finish 9-9. Nine and nine, And that is a fabulous turnaround. It's oh, the best. In the conference, make that obviously the best in the conference, and one of the best in the nation. And Constantine Popa leaves the floor for the final time in a regular season game here at Miami Arena. What you have to love about what Leonard Hamilton has done with this team is that they play hard, great intensity. They've got excellent guard play now. He's moved the program to another notch. And Norris misses from there. And the Connecticut Huskies are the regular season champions in the Big East Conference. For the second consecutive year, and that's the only team that has ever done that. Now for UConn, they had to do it without Coach Jim Calhoun. He was tossed out about seven minutes in for the first half of that game. UConn 23 and 3, 16 and 2 in the conference for Miami, 15 and 11, 9 and 9 likely headed to the NIT. All right, let's move along now. Midwestern Collegiate Quarterfinals, Wright State against Xavier. Wright State playing the game on their home floor, but facing a team that had not lost at all during the regular season. Skip Prosser in his first year, 23-3, and three, didn't lose in the conference at all. Darrell Woods pass tipped by Sykes. Jeff Massey all alone for the jam. 12 first half points in the second half. Xavier's up by one. Mike Connor with a hard foul on Pete Sears. And then a little pushing and shoving. A technical is called. Late in the game, Rob Welch, who had been dynamite from three-point range, knocks down his fourth of the game. Xavier is up by one, 68-67. And you can see the time remaining just over a second. John Rainey inbounds to Harriman, and it goes. Wright State wins the game by one. 
And that's what can happen. You play on your home floor, doesn't matter who you're facing. The number one seed, Xavier, that was unbeaten in conference play, 71 to 70, they go down. The Raiders play Butler Detroit winner tomorrow. So we have yet another upset here on Championship Week. Richmond over UNC Wilmington, speaking of upsets. Number seven seed gets the number two seed, 60 to 54. The Seahawks will play. Or rather not, the Seahawks will not play. The Richmond Spiders will play the next game against James Madison, William & Mary winner tomorrow. Missouri Valley Conference, 75-72. The number two seed survives. Johnny Murdoch did have 20 points in a losing cause, but they go on to play Southern Illinois Drake winner tomorrow. Loyola Marymount against Santa Clara. Santa Clara, the number one seed, goes down 87-83 is the final. The Lions play Portland tomorrow as they advance with that 13 and 14 record. East Tennessee State against Tennessee Chattanooga. You see the final here by two, 71 to 69. The number one seed survives. We'll continue with more of Championship Week in just a moment. Coming up next, the championship in the Ohio Valley Conference. It's the home of country music and a host of square dances. And tonight, this musical town hosts a dance of a different variety. Austin P joined in by knocking out number one seed Tennessee State, while number two seed Murray State got here by cutting in on Eastern Kentucky. It's the Ohio Valley Conference Championship game, and the winner goes to the big dance. Dialing lets you call important numbers with one touch of one button. Emergency road services. Amazing. Nokia. Cellular phones. Now, an oil made just for your hard-working engine. 4x4 from Quaker State. Off-roading. Extreme temperatures. Towing and hauling, they all make your light truck or 4x4 work extra hard and could shorten its life. Why settle for a conventional car oil? Get 4x4 from Quaker State. Now, an independent test proved 4x4 superior to leading conventional car oils in protecting against deposits that can shorten engine life. When young policyholders come to me, I look at them and think, boy, that was me 15 years ago. I remember very well how quickly things changed for Debbie and me. Marriage, children, our first house. It's exactly why State Farm's family insurance checkups are such a good idea. Your agent helps you put it all in perspective so you can make the right decisions. The way you were five years ago is not the way you are today. It's comforting to me when I can say to my policyholders, hey, I've been there. State Farm is there. Rule number 20, sticks. Rule number 25, to play the game, use a puck. The Oilers face the Sharks Wednesday. The NHL rules on ESPN2. It's March Madness around the nation. It's tonight from Nashville. We're bringing you a different version in Music City Madness. As this evening, it's the final of the Ohio Valley Conference. Plenty of upsets already. And welcome to Nashville. The Murray State Racers taking on the governors of Austin P. Conflicting reports, but finally they tell us we are here. Joel Myers along with Terry Holland. The pace of the race is the key tonight. It's a battle for tempo, Coach. And the Racers, appropriately named, Murray State, they love to force the issue with the player of the year in the conference, Marcus Brown. Well, Marcus Brown is a coach's dream. He plays great defense, and that defense gives them a chance to score a lot of points, and that's the reason he was the player of the year in the OVC this year. The other way, they'd like to get in half-court sets. In fact, the second leading scorer in the conference featured for Austin P. It's Bubba time, Bubba Wells. Well, Bubba Wells is a strong 6'5 player. He takes the ball to the basket with authority, but he also is a very good defender himself and an excellent rebounder. Second leading scorer in the league this year. He's only a sophomore and he's a player to watch. A real battle tonight in strategy. We'll come right back as we had set the Ohio Valley Conference Championship game. Austin P. The governor matching up with those loved racers from Murray State when we come back. Channel 2 Action News. Complete Georgia news coverage. We're live at Chopper 2, Channel 2 Action News. 
the best balance of local. Not everybody here supports what the county commission has done. Regional, national, and international news. We all want the best for our children. Now, John Pruitt joins Monica Kaufman and Don Farmer. They're professional, experienced. They're the anchors who know Georgia. John Pruitt, Monica Kaufman, and Don Farmer. Channel 2 Action News. Coverage you can count on. What do you give the person who has everything? A new car? A necktie? Bedroom slippers? Of course not. Give the gift of cable and give the gift of entertainment. Cable television provides year-round enjoyment at a price anyone can afford. From local programming to big-time sporting events and national and international news, plus the latest and best in hit movies, cable has it all. Make someone's day. Better yet, make their year with the gift of cable through a Scripps Howard gift certificate, available in various dollar amounts. Let Scripps Howard make your gift giving easier. Call us today for more information. All right, I'm told we're not on camera this time, at least. And welcome back once again to Nashville. Time for the starting lineups brought to you by MasterCard. And we go with the starting five for Austin P and their head coach. Jermaine Savage had 20 in the semifinal win. The junior from Franklin, Kentucky, he has been rock solid during the tournament. Actually, just a 12-point average, but scoring 20 over the first two games of the tourney. Dave Luce in his fifth year as the head coach for those governors. And for Murray State, Scott Edgar in his fourth year as the head coach. Vincent Rainey, the key to the attack. He has risen in crunch time, as they say. The sophomore from Memphis. His confidence has risen, and he's also the third leading scorer in the conference as well. So here we go. Joel, as you mentioned, we've got the three leading scorers in the conference here tonight, but defense will probably decide this game, not offense. Bubba Wells will be jumping. And right away, Austin P with the ball. And they go to the half court set. Now, you had mentioned to Coach Bubba Wells is the type of guy who likes the 12 to 14 footer. He's not big on the 18 to 20 footer. And we see Murray State starting in his own defense to try to take advantage of that. What they're doing is saying this takes a lot of Bubba Wells game away from him. He can't play in that 12 to 14 foot area. And if he does post up inside, he's going to go against their biggest player. Bubba Wells off the mark on his first drive. And here come the racers. What we talked about trying to push the ball up the floor constantly. Vincent Rainey. Davis is there. Couldn't get the easy one. And he's got it. Austin Pease, John Jenkins with the rebound. Good look inside. And Davis with the foul. That'll send Otis Key to the free throw line. And Austin P has to find that fine line of being aggressive with the basketball, looking for opportunities like this. You see the open man? He's there. You've got to deliver the basketball, but you don't want to get in a running game, running gun game with this particular Murray State team. Otis Key, a junior from Russellville, Kentucky. But his high school basketball at the same high school. They gave Austin P Bubba Wells. 6'8", 240 pounder. Hard worker, and as the coach has said, a very coachable player. Early lead for Austin P, the underdogs, the number five seed coming into the contest. Moore, the point guard, works out front against Colby Pearson. Moore is a southpaw that likes to work, actually, the right side of the court. So the best way to keep yourself from being pressed is don't let the other team score so they can set up their press, and that's exactly what Austin Pease doing right now, playing great defense. Colby Pierce almost threw it away. Bubba Wells with a creep.